That's but, me but football. No, you know, I know, but hang on. <laughs> but in fairness, Colin, I accept totally that he meant to show them or whatever. But, yeah. he, but what happened was, did he not get him with that? And therefore, that is just... No, I don't think he hit him with his elbow. I think he hit him with his shoulder and his elbow came up after the contact had been made. Uh, it was it was a, d a dangerous hit, but like you know, I think that he just he he was going to hit him square on, mm, yeah. and I don't think that there was any malice whatsoever in it. Okay, the nominees for man of the match, Colin. Well, the nominees are all on the Monaghan side because they they definitely had by far the best players on the pitch today. Uh, Paul Finley with his cultured left foot, probably the best long left-footed kicker in the game. He was really brilliant all through the game today. Dick Clerken, who was much maligned and often gets a lot of stick from fellas like Joe Brawley and Pat Spillane on the Sunday game. It was great to see Dick doing so well. Got through an amount of work and then kicked two points from play. Dick won't know what happened to him. And, of course, Tommy Freeman, who you would expect would be tied up by the Armagh defence, always was buzzing around, scored a goal and four points from play. All right, and Tony, the winner? We chose Dick Clerken uh, today for Monaghan. I thought he had a superb game right through. And when it was in the first uh, 20 minutes, he was very dominant around the middle of the field. He added scores, which he's not really noted for, but they were really good scores today. Here's the, the first one, and we saw the one before uh, that we showed just a few minutes ago. I know the game was over at this stage, but I suppose mm. it was a perfect way for him to finish the game today. And... Uh, it just showed the kind of arrogance that Monin had today. They were so far on top that they were able to just pick off their points from 45 yards and he had a super game. OK, well, let's hear from him then. Our man of the match, Dick Clarkin. Well, Dick Clarkin, congratulations. You're the man of the match. It just finished this spot. I'm sure it's pretty close to a perfect day for you. Yeah, it's one of those days that I suppose you don't get that often in, uh, in your career. I suppose I'm 11 years now and... Certainly haven't had one of them, um, but you know there's a lot of pressure on us going into that day in, in, today, and we sort of knew that time was running out for this team to deliver. Um, we knew there was a performance like that in us. You know we just don't see it often enough, especially at championship level and especially in the Ulster Championship. You know we've a very poor record um, in truth in the Ulster Championship. So today was very important to get over that and to do it the way we did. Well, it was extra pleasing. OK, so well done to Dick. Congratulations. Still to come on the programme, Wicklow versus Westmead. But let's now take a look back to yesterday evening's action. What turned out to be an incredible evening's football in the 2010 Championship. Coming up shortly, Louth against Kildare. But first, it's Sligo versus Mayo with match commentator Dara Maloney. Mayo will try and get stuck into Sligo as quickly as possible. This is Alan Freeman, his first touch in Championship football, the wind helping, and that was nerveless, brilliant from Alan Freeman. Johnny Davey making it very difficult for Moran, but he's extremely strong, and a direct ball in towards Freeman for Mayo, he's got a point already, and Freeman, there's a penalty, it's a penalty. Is it a penalty? Here we go again, in he comes, yeah, certainly he brought it down, mm. clear penalty, well done referee. Freeman taking his time. And scoring, that's a brilliant penalty. And I think we're seeing the start of a very exciting Mayo career. A goal and a point in seven minutes for Alan Freeman. Alan Costello for Sligo, all very tight. There's Varley trying to put pressure on him. And McGee just lost that, but he's got it back. Colin McGee has got a free already. There's one from play, and that's better from Sligo. Here's Johnny Davy again. Tom Kniff just in front of him, Davy doing extremely well, deciding to back himself, Davy, the crowd like it, and that is the score of the afternoon from a Sligo point of view. He's been superb. Mortimer is the furthest forward at the moment, end of Arley two. Seamus O'Shea drifting over to the far side with Ross Donovan. O'Shea brings Connor Mortimer in. Mortimer, they need this one, Mayo, and they've got it, have they? Yes, they have. Alan Freeman wants it, it goes towards end of Varley who got free, Varley for Mayo, turned back around, there was a shooting chance, that might still be brilliantly blocked down, fantastic block by the captain Charlie Harrison. Shot on goal, what a block, super block. McGarrity has been put under serious pressure by Tony Taylor who stuck to him, there was a little reaction from Alan Costello there which we don't need to see, Kelly way out in front of Vaughan. David Kelly, Gilmartin working to his left, Kelly goes at it with his right boot, and it goes up and over, and they're back level again. Screaming forward is Tony Taylor, and he's been spotted. Billy Joe Patton trying to get back 
to make some sort of a challenge on him. Mark Breheny for Sligo. They run straight into that defensive screen. Taylor for Sligo. They love it, and why not? It's a brilliant point. And Sligo go in front at Markovic Park. 13 minutes into the second half. Mayo with just one point in the second half. Patton launches that in towards Alan Freeman. If they can get him the ball, he'll surely score. Freeman steadies down, and there is the trick for Mayo. Get Freeman the ball back to within a point. It doesn't feel like they're just a point behind. Tony Taylor scored a brilliant point in the second half. Seven minutes since their last score. David Kelly could change that now. Sweeney is available too. Sweeney in there for Sligo. The hand pass just had too much on it, but Sweeney is determined. Here's Kelly. Stephen Gilmartin, he scored a few during the league campaign. There's one in the championship. Big response from Sligo. Mayo were leading by two at half time. Now it's Sligo by two. And there's a point for Sligo. Brilliant stuff. It looked like Alan Costello again. Alan Costello, yeah. This, the guy that wasn't good enough to play with Mayo gets a fantastic score from 45 yards out. Who wants it more? Gil Martin for the home team. David Kelly way out in front of Vaughan. Kelly on his right boot. Beautiful contact with it and a great point. And they needed that one. They've restored that three-point cushion. Sweeney of Sligo. Costello. Hand pass looked a bit dodgy. Oh, what a fantastic point from Alan Costello. Mayo, they didn't want it. Sligo have taken him. And you can see why. Connor Mortimer. Three points back. Mortimer. What's he done with it? He's put it wide. He's put it wide. And the old failings, from Mayo's point of view, are back to haunt them again. Charlie Harrison has been absolutely outstanding. Mark Breheny has chipped in when they've needed it. Breheny to David Kelly. Need to say more. Kelly goes again. He's got support inside. Kelly from a tricky angle, and that seals it. That is the insurance point. Are Sligo heading for their biggest day since Hyde Park in 2007? It would appear so. Sligo were very good and fair to them. They put it up to us and. As I said, all we can do now is regroup and get back to the training field and hopefully come good in the qualifiers. Joel Kiernan's after taking over Galway, you know, they're going to be, it's going to be a tough task ahead of us. But, you know, at the start of the year, we wanted to be a serious team. That was our main aim. And if, if you want to be a serious team, you have to be beating teams like Mayo and Galway. So hopefully we will. Little breeze around. What breeze there is, is uh, favouring loud in the first half. That's Paddy Keenan. He'll have a big role, you imagine, to play tonight as Shane Lennon links up here with Brian White again, gets it onto the right foot and puts it over the bar. Brilliant scoring. Now, Brian White. Held here well by Andy McDonnell. Back once again it comes. And that time a much better attempt and it's over the bar. Middle of the park. Kildare just leaving two men on the inside forward line. And now there's an opportunity to break here. And it's Podrick O'Neill who joins the other two. Big gaps. Fists it over the bar. Good decision. Very wisely done by Podrick O'Neill. Now, rolled in there towards Ronan Sweeney. First time I think he's got on the ball. And it comes back again. Oh, now... Should have been able to clear that one. Instead, it ends up with James Cavanagh. Oh, here's a chance. And it's in. Podrick O'Neill. Opening goal of the match comes in the 13th minute. Played forward beautifully by James Cavanagh to the unmarked Podrick O'Neill, who found the back of the net. And the teams are level. Paddy Keenan now. Challenge late. Keenan on the ground, wrestling with Darrell Flynn as play continues. Finally, it's Mark Brennan, and Mark Brennan 